Over the past couple of months, I have started multiple different Shopify dropshipping websites, and in that time, I have learned a lot about building websites, advertising your product, and finally, scaling your dropshipping business to a point of profitability. And in this video, I am going to be going over exactly step-by-step -step how I go about building a Shopify dropshipping business, and along with that, I am also going to be going over some tips about what I have learned so far about this mysterious business model. Alright guys, so step one to starting your very own dropshipping empire is to obviously sign up for a Shopify account. At the time of me making this video, Shopify is offering a 90 day free trial for anyone who signs up for their service. So that means for the first three months of using the Shopify application, you do not need to pay a single cent. All you need to do to unlock that free trial is use the link down below in the description and sign up for a Shopify account. Now, after getting your 90 days free with Shopify, the next thing you want to do is pick out a potential multi-million dollar dropshipping product to sell. There are a few ways to do this, but the first way I recommend is literally just scrolling through your Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook feeds and looking for products that are being heavily advertised. Because chances are, if a product is being heavily advertised, there is likely some big money in it. Just scrolling through Instagram theme pages in the yoga niche, I have found that these acupuncture mats are being heavily advertised and this might be an indication that they are big time sellers. Some other ways you can find winning products to dropship is by using paid product research tools such as dropshipspy.com or dropshiprabbit.com. I personally have used these dropshipping tools in the past and they always get the job done. The great thing about them is they don't just provide you with a product you could potentially sell, they also provide you with an ad, an ad copy, and Facebook detail targeting to run for your product. These product research tools will cost you 15 bones per month, but that is well worth it, at least in my opinion, because if you find a winning product to sell from one of those dropshipping tools, $15 will be what you use for toilet paper when you go to the bathroom. Now that I think about what I just said right there, that might actually be a viable option because toilet paper has been getting pretty low on supply as of lately. And in case you guys are still doubtful of what type of dropshipping product to sell, after all of the information I just gave, let me list out 5 winning dropshipping products that I know of that can potentially make you a lot of paper. Number 1, an acupuncture mat. Number 2, a multi-tactical shovel. Number 3, an inflatable boxing bag. Number 4, a dog snuffle mat. Number 5, a boxing reflex speed punch bag. There you guys go, go sell some of those products and get yourself that Lamborghini you've always wanted. Now that you found yourself a potential multi-million dollar Shopify dropshipping product, it is time to move on to the next stage of this process and learn how to build your very own website with Shopify. If you decide to move forward and build a Shopify dropshipping website yourself without any help from freelancers from Upwork or Fiverr, I recommend you get a custom theme for your website. Shopify dropshipping has been around for quite some time now and at this point the traditional ways of the business model is getting a little bit oversaturated. So I recommend you go out, purchase yourself a custom theme because that will make your website look much more unique and it will also increase your conversion rate for potential buyers. Now when building your Shopify dropshipping website, be sure to keep yourself in the mindset of a consumer the entire time. Continuously ask yourself, would I buy this product based solely on the design of the website? If the answer is no, be sure to keep working on your website, adding all sorts of images, GIFs, and graphs. If the answer is yes, make sure that your website design is absolutely flawless and ask some of your friends to review it from a consumer's perspective. After you've built yourself a dropshipping website, you're now pretty close to that guru status and next thing you know you're going to be selling those online courses about how dropshipping made you a millionaire like my boy Ty Lopez. Knowledge. Just kidding guys, the next step of this business setup after getting your dropshipping website all built out is to create a dropshipping video ad. 99.9% .9 of the time, video ads are more effective than photo ads for dropshipping because consumers really like to see a product in action before they consider buying it rather than seeing just a random picture of it. If you guys want to see an example of a video ad I have run for one of my dropshipping businesses in the past, then well, here you go. 
Now that I think about it, I am not going to bore you guys by playing the entire video ad, but it will be linked in the description for you all to check out after this video ends. Also, be sure to drop a like if you are enjoying this video so far. As you guys can see through that video ad, plenty of information was given about the product I was trying to sell. And along with that, the ad was kept relatively short and to the point, because when people are just scrolling through Facebook looking at all of the latest news about Takashi 6 ix release from prison, their attention spans are relatively short. If you are not the best video editor in the world, I would 100% recommend you go out and hire someone on Fiverr to make a video ad for you because having a great video ad is what determines dropshipping success versus dropshipping failure. So if your video ad sucks, it's pretty likely that you're going to have almost no sales on your dropshipping website. So 100% go out, hire someone on Fiverr, it'll only cost you like $10 or $15. After you've got your product, dropshipping website, and and video ad all set up for your business, it is time to get into the advertising or social media portion of the dropshipping business setup. Let's start with social media since that's what I would consider myself very good at. When setting up your business's social media, I would recommend you get started by creating both a Facebook page and Instagram account. On Instagram, I recommend that you post a solid 9 posts on your page to make your page look somewhat established and so that it is filled up with posts. Then on Facebook, take those same 9 posts with captions and post them on your company page. Some other things you may want to do on your business's social media is consider growing your Instagram page organically or consider buying followers. I almost never recommend anyone buys followers on Instagram, but having at least 1 to 2,000 followers on Instagram will make a potential buyer feel like they are purchasing something from an established brand rather than some random dude selling products from China in his garage. Knowledge. If you really want to have nothing to do with the black market business of buying Instagram followers, you can always run Instagram story ads since they are very cheap and undervalued right now. I ran Instagram story ads for a theme page I had a while back and I was able to get 4,000 active Instagram followers from only about $75 to $100 worth of Instagram ad spend. I then later converted that theme page into a dropshipping account for my business. Now guys, with that all being said, let us now get into some advertising strategy that can be used for both advertising your Shopify dropshipping product and also to advertise your future dropshipping course where you teach people how to become a Shopify millionaire while laying on the beach and doing absolutely nothing. Instagram theme pages are one of the most effective ways to advertise your dropshipping website, especially if you're working with a pretty small budget. I've literally had Instagram promotions where I've turned $30 in ad spend into $300 in sales for my website. That is what you call 10x, my friends. My boy Grant Cardone would be very proud of me. Go 10x bigger now. If you're thinking three or four, think 30 to 40. How would you do that? In all seriousness, when deciding whether or not to work with an Instagram theme page, you want to take a look at both its engagement and its quality of followers. When taking a look at an Instagram page's engagement, all you have to do is go to Google and type in Flonk's engagement checker. On that application, all you need to do is type in the Instagram page of the engagement you want to check, and it will literally tell you its engagement percentage, how many likes it gets per post, and finally, how many comments it gets per post. From there, you can decide whether the Instagram page has good engagement or not, and just for a rule of thumb, usually a good engagement on an Instagram page is between 2 and 3%. Now, to check the quality of an Instagram page's followers, all you need to do is go through their comment section. If a page has good quality of followers, you're going to see a lot of comments of people tagging their friends or asking genuine questions. If a page has bad quality of followers, you're going to see a lot of people self-promoting themselves or commenting stupid emojis. If you see those type of comments, you probably want to steer away from advertising on that specific Instagram theme page. If an Instagram theme page has solid engagement, good quality of followers, and finally the price for the Instagram feed post and link in bio is alright, which is typically $40 to $50 per 100,000 followers, then I would move forward and proceed to do business with an Instagram theme page. To move forward, all you need to do is send them a link to the product page of your website, your video ad, and finally an Instagram caption. 
Captions are usually super simple to make, but in case you guys do need some help with this part of the advertising process, I'm going to go ahead and pop some sample captions up here on the screen that I have used in the past for some of my dropshipping businesses, and hopefully that helps you guys out. Being able to run Facebook ads for Shopify dropshipping will a lot of times scale your product to the moon in terms of numbers. And the reason for this is Facebook ads is such a scalable way to sell more products on your website. When you are advertising via Instagram theme pages, to spend more money on ads, you need to find more influencers to work with that have a solid pricing, solid engagement, and good quality of followers. And usually that takes a lot more time than with Facebook ads, because with Facebook ads, all you need to do is, for example, up your daily ad spend from five to $10 per day. I have definitely had an interesting experience running Facebook ads for my Shopify dropshipping websites in the past because let me tell you, my boy Mark Zuckerberg can definitely be a real pain in the butt sometimes. A couple weeks ago, I was in the process of scaling this product known as a multifunctional shovel, and for some reason, every time I tried to get an ad live on Facebook, Facebook would reject it because apparently they're not allowed to promote the sale of weapons. I get that reasoning and all, but I really don't consider a shovel a weapon. I mean, sure, you can hit someone in the head with a shovel and kill them, but if I really wanted to do some major damage, I would get one of those grenade launchers the characters from GTA use. But anyways, in case you guys are curious as to how I start scaling a dropshipping website via Facebook ads, here is your answer. Usually, I will start things off as a CBO campaign at a budget of $50 on a daily basis, and I will target people who live in the United States, are between the ages of 20 to 65 plus, and finally, speak English. This is a country where we speak English, not Spanish. From there, within that CBO campaign, I will have 10 different ad sets, all with that same basic information, but the detailed targeting is going to be different for each individual ad set. The detail targeting will depend based on the type of product you are trying to sell, but just to give you guys a basic idea of how detail targeting works, when I was selling acupuncture mats via Facebook ads, I was targeting people interested in yoga, meditation, acupuncture of course, and obviously synonyms associated with those words. And then for certain ad sets, I would also narrow by engage shoppers, which basically narrows to people who tend to actually click on ads and purchase something from a website website based on their past history. After running Facebook ads for the first 72 hours, I begin optimizing the ads by cutting out the ones that are not profitable, and if there are any profitable ads, I will simply duplicate them and begin scaling them to a higher and higher daily budget until I can afford myself a Rolex on my wrist and a nice looking private jet. Your Facebook ad strategy will likely differ from mine based on how much startup capital you have for your dropshipping business. But for a general rule of thumb, I wouldn't really get involved with Facebook ads unless you have at least $1,000 in capital set aside for your dropshipping business. And the reason for this is Facebook ads can be relatively unpredictable from my experience because Mark Zuckerberg is kind of a weird guy. To remind yourself that you need to focus and... Um, and try not to let stuff bother you as much as possible, but it is gonna bother you because you're human and, and I was human. I am human, still. Um. <laughs> With that all being said, I think that is going to about wrap up today's video. I did my very best to drop as much value and free 99 knowledge in this one, so be sure to drop a like for that. And if you guys want to see me try Shopify dropshipping for an entire week, please be sure to click right here. And with that all being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.